So now we got this stuff working. I think it's working, right? This one did just... Yeah. Yes. Tawn has a special story she's going to share with us this morning. You want to go up front or you want to be here? Um, I'll go up front because okay. I think you can hear better up there. Okay, I have this special thing to share with you. Um, years ago, a couple had a business in Lexington, south of town, a great big cement house, red cement house, and uh, or brick house, and they sold ice cream. And Gary and I went there quite often, and we became friends with them. Well, something went wrong with her husband, and he became crippled, and he was in a wheelchair, and he... The doctors told him that he would never walk again. And so they tried to keep the business going, and it was just too difficult with one of them running a business. And so they decided to sell. Well, they sold, and they moved somewhere in Lexington, and we didn't know where they went. And when we were garage selling the other day, Gary said, we got one sale left, and that's going to be it. So we went to this sale, and lo and behold, his wife was out there. And she came up, and I was so shocked, and I gave her a big hug, and I said, oh, we wondered, all the, you know, where you've been? And she says, well, we're taking care of our, our parents here. And anyway, out comes her husband, and he's walking. And he said he went to a business, him and his wife, and they had bought something. And the man brought the thing that they bought and helped them to get it into the trunk of their vehicle. And he said, I want to pray for you. God is, is telling me to pray for you. And so this is what he did. He prayed for this man, and then they went home. Well, the next morning, his wife was busy making breakfast, and, and he got up out of bed, and she walked into the bedroom, and he was walking. Now, he hadn't walked for over 11 years, but he was walking. And he, he said God had given him a miracle. And I wanted to share that with you because I believe in God. I know there's a God. He's helped Gary and I many, many times. And this man was telling me about his story, and the tears were kind of coming to his eyes, and he had to quit, and his wife would add to it. But I, I wanted to share it with you. And that's it. Thank you, Tawn. That was, I mean, any time that God does something like that, absolutely remarkable. We need to, we need to acknowledge it, and we need to give him the glory for it, right? Um, it, it, wasn't, it, wasn't the, uh, it wasn't just the man that prayed. It wasn't just the man that believed. It was God that, that orchestrated that whole thing. And, yeah. When we, uh, we, when we take our, our cares and our concerns to God and, and when we listen to what he has uh, for us uh, to do, remarkable things happen. Amen. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that. So, um, unfortunately, I only got about 10 minutes this morning. I don't know if that's unfortunate or fortunate. But uh, we're, uh, <laughs> we're going to try to pack this sermon in here and try to get you out by 12.30. Um, <laughs> I have nothing to do, so. <laughs> because, again, it's all about sterling, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so last week... Um, uh, our sermon was Expect Far Greater, and we looked at 2 Corinthians 3, 7 through 11, and um, we should expect far greater from God, and um, we expect more out of ourselves, and, and that, that whole deal. And today we look at the second part of that, and the second part is a reflection of greatness, 
a reflection of greatness. How many of you like looking in the mirror? Again, it's all about Sterling. <laughs> I see a halo around. He sees a halo, okay. She's buried somewhere. She's buried somewhere. Buried at work. So we're going on a treasure hunt? <laughs> yeah, she's at work. Um, looking in the mirror isn't pleasant for most of us, is it? Because we see what? We see all the imperfections. We see all those things that we don't really want to see, that we don't like to see. And, and uh, so we tend not to look in the mirror. Or we find a mirror that, uh, that makes us look different. Charlene, in her, in her room, whatever she calls that room, she, the, you know, she's got a garden shed that she calls her hoe house. I don't know what she calls the room that she has. Uh, we will find out, I guess. But uh, she's got this room, and she's got a mirror on the wall. And it's this huge mirror that used to sit in my Grandma Freeman, Grandma and Grandpa Freeman's house, uh, in their living room. But Char, and I'm sure they don't appreciate this, but Char calls it her fat mirror. Because when she walks in front of it, she says it makes her look fat. So, so my suggestion would be, hey, let's get a skinny mirror, right? So that when you walk in front of it, it makes you look skinny. It's all about our perception and how we see ourselves and how others see us too. And so let's go ahead and look at the scripture. Therefore, since we have such hope, I need to... Yeah, yeah that's the right version. Uh, we use... Great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children, children of Israel could not, be, could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until that day, till this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ." But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord um, is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Spirit of the Lord. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the dailies you've given us. We thank you for the beautiful weather out there. Lord, we thank you uh, that, you're, um, that you're watching and protecting. And we ask that you would protect uh, Cross Culture, the members that aren't here today. Whatever they're doing, we just pray that they're focusing on you. They're spending time with family. And um, they're enjoying the day of rest that you've given us. Father, we ask that you would unpack this scripture for us. Help us to understand it. And uh, help us to see you the next time we look in the mirror. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So last week it says, so if the old way, which has been replaced, was glorious, the old way is the old covenant, the one that, that God gave us on the Ten Commandments, if it was so glorious, how much more glorious is the new way, which remains forever? And this new way, of course, is the way of Jesus Christ, the new covenant that Jesus has given us through his death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, so it says, since this new way gives us such confidence, we are not like Moses who put a veil over our face to, so that the people of Israel would not see the glory, even though it was destined to fade away. So this new way, this, this, this indwelling of the Holy Spirit into us has given us a bit of confidence that we wouldn't have otherwise. Some of us, we don't tap into that bit of confidence, though, do we? We don't recognize, hey, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm a member of the family of God. We just kind of let things slide, and, and we hold our heads low, and we don't let people see that, 
that love that shines within us. See, that's not a good thing. That's what happened to Moses in the Old Testament. He came down off the mountain and the, and the Israelites weren't, they didn't want to obey, they didn't want to follow, they didn't want to do this and that. So he veiled the glory of God that was given to him. They didn't understand. They were lost. And so we see today that we don't have to be lost. And when that glory comes upon us, when we ex accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and the Spirit comes inside and dwells in us, we shine a glory, we shine a light. And that light should not be hidden. There's that little children's song. I'm sure Jamie can sing it for us. Go ahead, Jamie. Come on. That's right, see? <laughs> yeah, and, and see, that, that's the point of this scripture right here. That light that lives within us, that's what we need to let shine out for all to see that we have the glory of Jesus. It says, but the people's minds were hardened, and to this day, whenever the Old Testament is being read, the same veil covers their mind. This veil of, of ignorance covers their mind. And so when the Scripture is being read to people that are not saved, their eyes are veiled their eyes are covered. Their minds are covered. They can't understand until the Holy Spirit says, Hey, I need you guys to understand. Here it is, and this is what it means. And then if, they, if, if we choose to accept that, the veil is lifted, and we can see, and we can understand, and we can read the Scriptures, and God will help us to grow in the Spirit. Because that veil is lifted, and this veil can be removed only by what? Only by believing in Christ. That's the only way that veil is removed. You remember when Jesus was on the cross and the sky was dark because God the Father couldn't look at His Son hanging on the cross. And when He gave up His life, He says, Into my hands I commend your sp my spirit. What happened? The veil in the Holy of Holies, that place that separated us from God Himself, was ripped from the top to the bottom. So there is no veil anymore, except for those who don't believe. Everybody that believes, there is no veil. We see God, we participate in God, but those that are veiled have no understanding. They have no love for God. They don't know why we do the things that we do. So it can only be removed by Christ. Yes, even today when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil and they do not understand. People that haven't given their hearts and lives to Christ are veiled and they don't understand this life that we live as Christians. And that's why we need to let our light shine. That's why we need to be the light and the salt to the world so that their veils will be lifted too. You know, that anybody that hasn't accepted Christ and they have that veil around their eyes and they can't, they can't see uh, the meaning in, in spirituality, they can't see the meaning in the Bible, those people, they're destined for a life of pain and suffering. Not just a life, a death of pain and suffering. Eternity of pain and suffering. We need to let our, our light shine. And whenever, turn, whenever, whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and 
wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And so all of us who have had the veil removed can see the refle- and reflect the glory of the Lord. And this is how the, you know, the whole mirror comes into this. Um, the, a reflection of greatness because we reflect God himself. And so this isn't like you're looking in the mirror. This is like you're holding the mirror beside yourself. You ever done that? You, wanna, you want somebody else to see you, so you hold the mirror over here, and you get it in such a way so that your reflection's in the mirror, but when you look, you can't see. All you see is over there, but when somebody else looks in the mirror, they see your reflection. Have you ever done that before? I, I did, had to do this in a car the other day. It wasn't my reflection that I was trying to reflect, but I was working on James's truck, and inside the door panel was a locking mechanism that was broke. I needed to take it out, so I took the mirror, and I stuck it in the door, and I, I tipped it in such a way that I could see the parts, and that's what we're talking about here. That's what God's doing with us. He's taking the mirror, and he's, he's tipping it so the world can see us, the reflection of him how much more important is that that the world sees the reflection of him and doesn't look at us directly this glory that is being reflected back absolutely amazing and this this is the same principle that God the Father uses to look at us you see because he doesn't look at us directly because we're sinful creatures right but when we're, when we're reflected to him and the, the Son covers us up, the Son of uh, Jesus Christ covers us up, and so he sees the reflection of the Son and sees us because the blood of Jesus covers us. And in that way, he can see his creation and enjoy the fact that his Son loved us so much that he gave his life for us. And whatever makes us more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. So, and the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. As that mirror is getting held up so the whole rest of the world sees God in us. And that is perfect. That's how we should live as God in us, growing in holiness, reflecting the love, the peace, the patience of Jesus Christ. We should love each other. We should have joy. And we should understand that those that don't know Christ, their eyes are veiled. That's why we need to pray for them. Their eyes are covered. They can't see the glory of the Lord. So we need to pray that the Holy Spirit steps in and takes away that veil. But it's got to be their decision. So just like you were once veiled, you didn't understand. The Spirit came and spoke to you. And all of a sudden, it was like, hey, I get this. I want to live for you, God. So we want to live for him more and more every day. Therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. We never give up. And that's next week's sermon. We're going to get into a little bit the next part, the next chapter of 2 Corinthians. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you that... uh, (laughs) That when folks look at us, they don't see us. They see your reflection. When God the Father looks at us, he doesn't see us. He sees your reflection. That is so important because we are fallen creatures, Lord. We struggle so bad to, to be good. And it's just not possible to be good enough. Thank you, Lord, for all the, all the things that you put us through. Thank you for your mercy, for your passion. Lord, we thank you for the church. Thank you for all the events that we've got going on. We pray that you will um, that you will carry us through them, and that we will show the community the love of Christ. Let that be our mission in life to serve you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Your pleasing and I am never alone.
You're a good, good father. So you are, so you are, so you are. And I'm loved by you. So I am, so I am, so I am. I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. There's only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. So you are, so you are, so you are. I'm loved by you. So I am, so I am, so I am. You're a good, good father. So you are. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to